Hi everybody, it's Whitney from All the Shelves. I've noticed on booktube that there is a lot of interest in nonfiction books. It seems like those videos always get a lot of comments from people that are looking for recommendations. And not that I'm trying to pander to your comments or your interests, but I do read a lot of nonfiction books, both for fun and for school. So I thought that I would go through my shelves and choose five books to recommend to you today, and I will have five more at another date. I can go on recommending nonfiction forever. The first book that that I want to recommend is called Satchmo Blows Up the World, Jazz Ambassadors Play the Cold War by Penny M. Von Eschen. Now this book was published by Harvard University Press, so it is an academic book with an academic audience in mind, but it's also really accessible, especially for an academic book. It is about how the U.S. made an effort during the Cold War to prove to the rest of the world that they were not racist by sending all these jazz musicians to perform jazz concerts around the world and though a lot of the musicians were skeptical about the project in general because back home they were experiencing Jim Crow laws and all sorts of segregation and horrible abuses of power um, but they still wanted to participate in spreading jazz because they wanted to show the rest of the world basically how important the African-American experience and African-American art is to American culture. So this book is a fascinating look at an event I didn't even know happened. These tours of jazz musicians around the world including to Russia to prove to Russians that Americans weren't racist even though yes absolutely they were. So this is Satchmo Blows Up the World by Penny M. Von Eschen. Hardly anybody has reviewed this on Goodreads so I would love to see more people pick this up. It's really an amazing book and amazing story. Switching gears, I want to recommend this book, The Devil's Highway by Luis Alberto Urrea. It's a book about the border between Mexico and America and the people who cross that border into the United States. And if you're like me, when you talk about immigration and border conflicts, you feel like you have a leg to stand on. You have such strong political beliefs that you feel like you are absolutely right. And this book really complicates that attitude. If you're like me, you want to think of the Border Patrol as racist sadist, um, and I'm not trying to offend anybody, I don't actually feel that way, but you kind of want to believe that because you want to believe that things are black and white, that there is good and evil, but that is absolutely not the case, and Urea makes um, very compelling arguments why it's not the case. At the same time, it is a highly compelling read. It's very violent, which makes their reading experience more compelling and also devastating at the same time, and it's highly personal. So I would recommend The Devil's Highway by Urea. Um, it's a great introduction to thinking about immigration and the border as well. The next book I want to recommend has been so pivotal to my studies on American culture. It's called Gunfighter Nation, The Myth of the Frontier in 20th Century America by Richard Slotkin. Now this is um, part of a trilogy on the West, but this is the one that I am most interested in because this is the one about violence and portrayals of violence and representation of the American West in literature and film and actually um, like the Wild Bill sideshow type things too. Slotkin is looking at how Americans um, at the turn, beginning in the turn of the century used the West as a way to explore the theme of regeneration through violence. This idea that was perpetuated by Teddy Roosevelt that you could go to the West, this virgin untouched land, and you could enact all of your manly fantasies and it's going to erase all the effeminate, weak side of yourself that civilization has implanted. You can undo all of that silly cultural stuff by going out into the land, getting your hands dirty, fighting some people, shooting some Indians, etc. In this book he picks that apart, he looks at how media represented the West and how it goes along with both that theory and the Frederick Jackson Turner theory of the West, which I won't get into. You can see that it is I mean, like, I just want to put it close to the camera so you can see just how big it is. This thing is 
enormous and it is fascinating throughout. I learned so much from this and I continue to use it in my research. The next book I want to recommend is Ex Libris Confessions of a Common Reader by Anne Fadiman. Anne Fadiman is the daughter of Clifton Fadiman who was a renowned literary scholar and was very much responsible for what we think of now as the Western canon. He published a lot of books and he edited a lot of books about great literature, what everyone should read, um, and he was like a judge for Book of the Month Club, that kind of stuff. So she grew up obviously having a very deep connection to books and this is a collection of her essays uh, about her relationship to books. I always love books about books. I think every reader usually loves books about books um, and I haven't read this in a while in its entirety, but I reread the first essay in this at least once a year. It's about how her and her husband are splitting up their bookshelves and how they decide which copies to keep and how they decide to organize their apartment, which is just very relatable and romantic. And I just love this collection. It's very short. Uh, you could read it very quickly and I highly recommend this. The next book that I want to recommend is 31 Songs by Nick Hornby. I have my sticker here from when I was living in London for a little while and bought this in a little bookstore and I didn't want to take off the sticker because I like those kinds of sense memories that books can provide. Anyway, you've probably heard or read um, Nick Hornby's series in The Believer on the books that he's read and which books are important to him as his life goes on, and I really enjoy that. I enjoy this a lot too. It's about 31 songs, obviously, that have been important to Nick Hornby. I have mentioned on this channel before and I will continue to express my undying love for Bruce Springsteen and he has an excellent essay in here on the song Thunder Road which he um, estimates that he has heard more than any other song in his life and I would estimate the exact same thing. I actually teach the song Thunder Road in an introduction to literature class and I teach the Nick Hornby essay alongside that song because I think that it shows the emotional aesthetic response that you can have to poetry. Here set to song. Um, it's just full of really insightful, really personal responses to music and I think it's a great example of what music journalism can do. So those are five nonfiction books that I own that I think you might like too. They went from the esoteric and academic to the uh, popular and really fun to read. So I hope that you can find something in this video that you're interested in reading or have already read and we can talk about it in the comments below. Thanks everybody!